Greetings. My name's Joe Bob, and I'm very peeved. And welcome to Scarlet Hollow. A game about the horrors of visiting relatives, or something along those lines. It is also a game made by the same people as Slay the Princess, apparently. Although unlike that game, this isn't actually fully completed, apparently. There's apparently going to be seven episodes or whatever, and there's only four out last time I checked, which was a minute ago, so it's probably still true. I thought about playing this after playing Slay the Princess, and then I didn't. But we're here now. Maybe I can recapture some of the slight success those videos came out. Or maybe this will just be more screaming into the void. But the two aren't mutually exclusive, now are they? You won't be able to save everyone. You might not even be able to save yourself. Welcome to Scarlet Hollow. Drink it in before it all comes tumbling down. Let's go. Your name is... Can I just put nothing? No. Darn. Well, I guess I could write nothing, but... I guess my usual choice is Joe Bob for... Obvious reasons. Although with a bit of thought I could probably create a name that would really ruin the tension of a lot of the horrific scenes of this game. That would be... <sighs> but no. Joe Bob it is. You live in the city of... Well, I don't exactly have a ready-to-go answer for that, and I'm not very quick with making up names. I don't know. I live in the city of, uh... City... Town... Ville... Sure, why not? Alright, select pronouns. Uh, I don't know... That... Eeny, meeny, my. Let me just close my eyes and pick. That's not helpful, is it? That's, I guess, he, him. Why not? Select two traits. Traits unlock additional paths and dialogue options. Powerful build. Tough as nails, the pinnacle of fitness, an imposing presence that commands the room, a mean right hook. Mystical, strange and unusual, you see the threads of reality in ways others cannot. Talk to animals, you can talk to animals. Imagine that! Animals can talk to you, a gift and a curse. Well, <laughs> yeah, I would hope animals can talk to you. It would be kind of useless if you could talk to animals, but not the other way around. I mean, most people can talk to animals. Street smart. Street smart! Uh, good at lying and hard to lie to. Fast talker. You can read people and read the room. No door can hold you. You wear a cowboy hat. Keen eye. Observant with a knack for picking up small details. Empathetic. Which is just a, two letters away from pathetic. Book smart. Well read and rational. Possess a wealth of esoteric knowledge and know when to use it. A talented researcher. Hot. Extremely good looking. A natural flirt. People like you. Pro People just like you. Probably because you're a good person. <laughs> Well, isn't that just lovely? I have to make a very important decision right at the start of the game before I know what any of this means, and I can only choose two out of the fucking seven of them. 
And of course, all of the traits are incredibly vague and pro and I have no idea how they'll impact the game at all because I don't know anything about the game. Fun. And by fun, I mean a very cheap way to get you to replay the game over and over again for probably t small differences. <sighs> I, yeah, I really don't like this sort of choice in particular for a lot of reasons. So you know what? I'm going to do something about it. After all, why bother watching this series? In particular, why not any other YouTuber? Who'd probably do a better job of it. Well, I'll tell you why. I'm going to do something that I bet you won't see in any other YouTube series. Probably not. I highly, highly doubt it. Just watch. And just like that. Because why settle for merely being good at two things? Why not simply take it all and give nothing back? That's my advice. Avoid the choice altogether. Change the facts. <laughs> Let's get started, shall we? Let's get started living our life, not the life prescribed to us by some game developer. Let's uh, save so we don't have to do that again. You, you jolt awake as the bus hits a particularly nasty bump. You feel like you'd only just managed to start drifting off. And now, here you are awake again, and still exhausted. For a moment, you're hazy on the details of where exactly here is, confusing this bus with the many others that came before it. But as your mind continues to reassert its existence in the waking world, the past few days come back into focus. The long-lost cousin, the bad news, the 26 hours of bus rides, with countless late night stops in CD depots that would have felt unsafe even in the middle of the day. You wouldn't normally find yourself traveling like this, but your cousin bought the tickets. <sighs> the funeral of Pearl and Scarlet, your cousin's mother and your aunt, seemed like something you shouldn't ignore even considering your own late mother's rocky relationship with this side of the family. Is that right? Did you even know her? Did you... What did... What did you even know about Pearl and Scarlet? You mentioned your late mother's rocky relationship with that side of the family. Did you even have a, rela a relationship with that side of the family? Because if not, this is a fucking stupid idea. Going so far out of your way. 
But it was also more than just the social pressure of the invitation that pushed you to accept it. Something has been tugging you back to this place your entire life. There was no choice to be made, because you were always going to find your way here. So when your cousin called, you knew what had to be done. Is that right? Normally I'd say that's bullshit, but I suppose something has been tugging you back to this place. The writer. No choice to be made. I mean, that's what life is, boyo. Choices. Out of all the things you can do, what will you do? This may not have been your best choice. And now the end of your long journey is in sight. You're almost in Scarlet Hollow. Technically, I'm already in Scarlet Hollow, but never mind that. <laughs> so anyway, as I was saying... Oh no, he's still here. He's been sitting next to you for the past five hours, talking at you without pause. You're not sure he even stopped when you started to doze off. At first you thought he was just being friendly, but that was several hours of one-sided conversations ago. I want to, yeah. What a shirt. I was up in Maryland, looking for work, but mostly messing around because I was a dumb teen. Me and my buddies were doing unusual prank stuff. You know, pushing joggers into the harbor, that sort of thing. Okay, Lewis Brindley. <laughs> that's not pranking, that's marauding at best. Pain and illness. Uh. uh, developers, I think there's a bug. I can't find the I don't know you and I don't care to know you option. Well, remaining silent clearly isn't working and all of these just give him an opportunity to talk more, so let's feign an illness. You violently fake a coughing fit. Pretending to be sick has always been one of the better ways to get people to leave you alone in strange places. Oh, are you sick? That's alright. I'm pretty sure I've already had whatever you've got. I'm sick all the time. Gotta keep my immune system on its toes, you know? <laughs> God damn it. So this girl comes up to us, swinging her purse, yelling about how she was gonna call the cops or whatever. It was hilarious. She actually hit... She actually hit my friend, and he said it hurt a lot. So I guess she was, so I guess she really was mad, and not just playing. But she kept swinging, and soon enough, she lost her balance and fell into the harbor all on her own. We didn't even have to push her. We had a good laugh and fished her out, and her phone got soaked, so she couldn't call the cops on us. We wound up hanging out all day. <laughs> okay. She kind of became my girlfriend after that, and we've been on and off for about a year. So it's pretty serious. I think you skipped a few steps there, but alright. That's, uh... Quite a story. Though about five months ago, she tried to break up with me. Like, for real, and jeez. You ever get just get so mad you... You just want to, like, kill somebody? Yes. Hot. Did he say she tried to break up with him? You can't even begin to imagine what that might feel like. Nobody's ever broken up with you. Uh, I, hon I honestly can't say anybody's ever tried to break up with me. Stop trying to get a rise out of me. I kind of feel like killing someone right now. Threaten, huh? I don't remember that being one of the trait choices. <laughs> Stop trying to get a rise out of me. Stop it. Stop it. Huh? Stop what? Whatever it is you think you're doing right now, you know what I'm talking about. This whole corner a stranger on the bus and try to make them uncomfortable act. I'm not playing along. <laughs> alright, alright. Maybe I never really wanted to kill her, even if I threatened it a little bit. Anyway, she's giving birth to our son right now, so I'm trying to get up to Virginia to be there for it. 
Okay. Good to know. What? I guess. But I don't know if I'm, like, into that stuff. So I might just wind up on a bus to New York or something instead. I've always wanted to go there. Have you thought about seeing a therapist? Uh, let's see. Get your act together. I'm serious. Get your act together. Or someday soon you're going to run into someone who doesn't tolerate your bullshit. You cross your arms and glare at the young man with menace in your eyes. Huh. Alright. Maybe you have a point. I guess New York will always be there waiting for me. Unless it gets wiped off the map, I suppose. Anyways. Where'd you say you were headed? I'm coming home. I'm coming home. My mother fled this place many years ago, but she's gone now, and I can feel it calling me back. Some things can only be put off for so long. The young man anxiously shifts in his seat. For one, per for one perceptible moment, it, it's his turn to feel uncomfortable, before he catches himself and heartily laughs. Oh, you must be talking about Scarlet Hollow, right? Or the Holler, as they call it in the mountains. That's the only other stop until this bus turns around. So if you aren't getting off at my stop, you must be headed up that way. Almost nobody ever goes there. I'm usually alone on the bus by now. Though, actually, I had a couple of buddies who went up there to work in the mine. There's a coal mine up in the holler, you see? And there's always a job listed or two on the boards around here. I've never wanted to do that kind of thing myself. I like my lungs the way they are. Thanks. But my buddies got desperate enough to try it. Yeah, I'll bet. Desperate in terms of money or desperate in terms of a place that the popo won't find them? Or... I haven't heard that... I haven't heard from them in a while, now that I think about it. I should see if they're on Facebook. See how they're doing up there. Hope they didn't die! They did. He looks back at his phone, for once focusing on something other than you. Oh, this is me. It was lovely meeting you. Hope you don't get too bored without me around to talk to. Don't worry. My boredom levels will remain roughly the same once you leave. Here, I have something for you. Excuse me? The stranger rifles through his pack before presenting you with a dripping bag of peanuts. I beg your pardon. They're boiled peanuts. I got them at a gas station a few buses back. I noticed you haven't eaten much, so I figured you could use them more than me. Plus, they dripped all over my bag, so I don't want to carry them anymore. Tip. Sometimes picking a dialogue option establishes new facts about who you are. Don't they all? We all make our choices, but in the end, our choices make us. Why were they even- Why was it even in a bag like that anyway? Who fucking- Who fucking does that? I mean, that's not boiled peanuts. That's effectively peanut soup in a bag. You're not supposed to leave the peanuts in the water. Nor are you supposed to put them in leaky bags like that, which don't even look like they're secured properly, although... Sure, why not? Protein is protein. This can't possibly go horribly wrong. In no way at all. I didn't... I didn't build these muscles by turning down free protein. You take the wet peanuts from the stranger. It's been several hours since you've had any protein, which is several hours too many in your book. You tear into them immediately, not even bothering to remove the shells as you chew through fistfuls of soft legume. In a few moments, they're all gone. I figured someone like you would get some good use out of them. And with that, I leave you. Safe travels, friend. And 
just like that, the stranger is gone. Maybe you can finally get some sleep. Next up, Scarlet Hollow, end of the line. Almost there. Hmm. The bus finally comes to a stop, its brakes squealing as it deposits you in front of the Scarlet Hollow bus station. Apparently, at 11 a.m. For Ren. Who's Ren? The sign at least reads bus station, but calling it that feels disingenuous. At best, it's a kiosk. Though for a small town like this, you're amazed there's so much as a road, let alone a bus that drives on it every week. Does it say bus station? I think it just says bus and Scarlet Hollow, but never mind that. The driver quickly shuts the doors behind you and starts the engine, kicking up dust clouds as he pulls away, eager to leave you and this place behind. Yeah, I feel ya, man. Hey, Joe Bob. You instantly recognize the worn young woman, that's a woman, from the few public photos on her Facebook page. She's your cousin, Tabitha, and she looks annoyed to be here. Powerful build and hot. Charm her. <laughs> okay, so. Ah, powerful build. Go, go in for a firm handshake. Hot. Make a good first impression with a winning smile. Powerful build and hot. Charm her. <laughs> How can I say no? <laughs> Fusion high. Just got take a menu option that t requires two traits. Oh dear. I'm gonna have to give separate voices not only to each of the traits but also each of the combinations. Dear builder, preserve me. Your cousin might be annoyed now, but nobody's walked away from meeting you uncharmed. You flash Tabitha the sort of smile that contains every emotion you might need to convey. Relief at meeting your long-lost family for the first time. Profound sorrow at the circumstances needed to make that meeting happen. Slightly nervous anticipation at the opportunity to build a new relationship. Tabitha, it's so nice to finally meet you. I was so sorry to hear about your mom. And there it is. I... Thanks. For a brief moment, Tabitha is put at ease, before she quickly straightens up and the annoyance returns to her face. It might not have been much, but it's progress. Come on, let's go. I don't want to spend any more time down here than I have to. Your cousin turns and motions to an old BMW parked near the bus kiosk. You follow her, clambering into the dusty relic. You're a dusty relic. It doesn't take much driving before the only signs of civilization are the car you're in and the road you're on. Tabitha maintains an icy silence as she focuses on the road. Tip! Dialogue options labeled Explore can usually be taken without advancing the story. They can impact relationships and unlock additional story paths, so choose carefully. I sure hope this... Oh. Usually. So it's going to be like Disco Elysium, isn't it? Where you're like, oh yeah, sometimes this happens, and then sometimes you're just kind of shit out of luck and have to kind of guess <laughs> as to whether or not you'll actually be able to do the other options, even if it's very, it, you could very easily do the other options and you have no reason to think that you couldn't. <sighs> I guess we're both members of the Dead Moms Club now, huh? Yeah, I see what it means about choosing carefully. <laughs> um, how are you holding up? 
Dare I engage in platitude? Fine. Hmm. See, that's the fun of having all these traits. In what other series are you going to watch me have the pleasure of having to choose between three different trade options? Or more, potentially. Can't wait to eventually encounter a choice between 28 different options. That'll be fun. You don't have to hide how you're feeling around me. We're family, even if we just met. She sighs, a particularly heavy sigh. Look, I appreciate your concern, but I'm fine, really. Hmm. On the other hand, are you sure? You seem tense. Are you sure you're all right? You seem tense. You know you can talk to me, right? I went through something similar when my own mom passed. She tenses up even more at the mention of your mom before letting out a heavy sigh. She tenses up even more at the mention of your mom before letting out a heavy sigh. Maybe it's a sore spot for her. You quickly apologize. I'm sorry. I know that's probably not what you're looking to hear right now. Uh, yeah. That was about the same. I'm... You don't. You don't have to. Bottle, you don't have to bottle your grief like that. I'm not bottling anything. I'm just more emotionally mature than you. <laughs> hey, fuck you. Hmm. Yeah, not much out of out of that. What do you expect from a platitude? This seems so woefully insensitive, I have to see what this results in. Your cousin turns to stare at you, an icy hatred in her eyes. Maybe this would have worked to ease the tension if she were someone else, but she isn't. Evidently. <laughs> yeah, that was a... I mean, that's just a terrible idea in general, really. So, the funeral. It's on Sunday, right? Yep. Like I told you. Jeez, that's almost a whole week. Let's see. Have you worked out all the details yet? Mm-hmm. Taken care of. Don't need any help. Hmm. I can't believe you've never actually met before this. I can. You have your mom to thank for that. Or had, I guess. You can feel the same careless cruelty in Tabitha's words that your mother would use when she talked about Pearl Ann and the old Scarlets. The wound that tore your family apart runs deep enough that it bled through the generations. You sound like her right now. My mother. She hated this side of the family so much. We don't have to become our parents. There are some things in life we get to choose. She's the one who left. She is. And you're not. I'm debating whether it's worth going for the platitude anyway, even though it doesn't seem to have much effect. Hmm. I guess the, the street smart one at least seems like it might have some beneficial effect. This one, on the other hand, just seems like a terrible idea in general. I mean, unless I was trying to goad her, which... Potentially there's merit there, but... I don't know. Let's just remain silent. You decide to sit in silence with your cousin as the car eases up the steep mountain road.
God, that cursor is bony. Fun that's a funny... And here it is, the Scarlet Estate. Though it's seen better days, its crumbling elegance is not lost on you. Someone used the cramped apartments in grey cities. Crumbling elegance? I agree with the first part. Who, who thought it was a... I sure hope this place used to have different terrain, because who would be stupid enough to build a mansion right on the edge of a cliff? That is just... I mean, it looks like it would... It looks like it could fall off at any moment, goddammit. <sighs> or at least half of it. Your mother told you about this place many times before she passed, always with an anger burning beneath her words. The faded majesty you once imagined doesn't quite compare with what's in front of you, a jarring blend of opulence and ruin. I agree with the second part, and the jarring part. As you stare at it perched on the crumbling cliffside, you can't help but feel like it's something that should have been left to rot a long, long time ago. Forget left to rot, it should have been condemned. Probably demolished. Or at least severely remodeled. You're hit with a blast of dusty air as you step across the threshold and into the foyer. Everything in this room has been here for much longer than you've been alive. Hmm. Debatable. I mean, what about the dust? I'm sure there's plenty of fresh dust. Fresh-ish. Plus the bugs. Each object cemented in place with layers of dust and cobwebs. You can hear doors creak on their hinges and the aches and moans of ancient floorboards as the house itself sways in the wind. This place does not feel remotely safe for habitation. Please tell me you're going to find somewhere else to stay. Because this is just... I don't even care about the supernatural stuff. This place should have been condemned a long time ago. This is not fit for human habitation. This isn't fit for insect habitation. Welcome to our family's humble estate. Unfortunately, due to the current state of the house, only a few rooms will be safely accessible during your stay. I contest that. I'd contest the idea that any of them are safely accessible, but all right. I wouldn't go wandering anywhere else if you value your limbs. The floors have been known to give out. I wouldn't be here if I valued my limbs. If you know what's good for you, you'll stick to your room, your bathroom, and the kitchen. And hallways, I guess. But only the hallways you need to use to get to those places. Fuck you, you can't tell me what to do. I'll show you around so you know where it's safe to walk. You can leave your bags here for the time being. <laughs> it's lie. It's beautiful. Oh man, this place is huge! I can't wait to unwind! Uh I thought you were- I thought y'all were loaded. Can't you afford to fix this dump? <laughs> Tabitha's dagger-filled eyes are as much of an answer as you're going to get. Okay. So they're not answer- so they're not gonna answer why they're living in a- in a heap that should- should have been condemned a long time ago. Okay. The architecture reminds me of the Biltmore estate. The architecture here is breathtaking. Chateau-esque style, reminiscent of the Biltmore estate. Color me marginally impressed. I didn't have you pegged as cultured. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Obscene, or as the French say, cultured. 
Believe it or not, this estate actually predates the Biltmore by nearly three decades. It used to be the crown jewel of the region, but times change and the intentions of the masses are ever so fickle. Nearly three decades, huh? That would be what? 1860? Though personally, in terms of places I'd actually want to live, I've always been more fond of the Overholzer Mansion over in Oklahoma City. Uh, but the Biltmore Estate is certainly picturesque. This, on the other hand, is uh, less so. Shall we begin the tour? Follow me. You put your bags down and follow Tabitha through a long, dusty hallway. She delicately steps over holes and tears in the floor. And you do your best to trace her steps. Kitchen. On Wednesdays, a woman from town comes in and does the cleaning. Her name is Janie. I wouldn't recommend socializing with her. She'll talk your ear off. If you need any food, there's fixings for peanut butter and jelly. As Tabitha speaks, your eyes are drawn to the windows and the overgrown garden outside. Dread and anxiety grip your lungs, and you can almost feel the ground beneath you start to slip. This place is a step away from being swallowed up and vanishing forever. Well, I didn't need mystical senses to tell me that. <laughs> Don't touch my mac and cheese or my ice cream. Those are off limits. All right, eat all the mac and cheese and ice cream. Got it. Oh, and you can also access the garden through here, but it's pretty wild, so I wouldn't if I were you. Tip. Some explore options prevent you from taking others. Choose carefully. Yeah. I, why is the fucking text thing, selector thing, so fucking tiny? Is there a way to increase the size of it? Because this is ridiculous. What's that? Character history? Pretty sure I have a bit more than that, but alright. Good, good to know which ones take... It's good to know which ones take priority. Um, controls... No, that's just... Ah! Why is accessibility like this whole fucking window thing annoying? No, there doesn't seem to be any way to increase the size. Visual overlay intensity, why is that off? And why does it seem to have no effect? Whatever, who cares? Let's see. This place isn't safe, and I don't mean that in the sense of it being perched on a literal cliff. Something is wrong here. Or, also mystical, I can feel the weight of the world pulling down on this place. Or, street smart. I've always, I've always dreamed of having a kitchen like this. Someone cleans this place? You said someone actually cleans this place? Have you ever actually seen that happen? Or does this person just say they did it and leave? Um, let's see. Let's go top to bottom then, I guess. Let's see what this results in. This place isn't safe. And I don't mean that in the sense of it being perched on a literal cliff. Something is wrong here. Okay, jeez. I get it. You think it's messy. I'll tell Janie to be more thorough this week. <laughs> but you should know there's only so much anyone can do with a co country house this old. It's always going to be a little grimy and worn, unlike your sleek city apartments. If a little dirt bothers you, you're going to have a rough time this week. <laughs> That's not exactly what I was referring to, but alright. Let's see. I can feel the weight of the world pulling down on this place. As if the entire estate is a step away from crumbling to dust. 
same result, huh? <laughs> What's this? I've always dreamed of having a kitchen like this. It's so much bigger than what I'm used to in the city. Is that a kitchen island? It is. Thank you. See, lying will get you everywhere. Since she was deflecting my weird mystical stuff. Anyway. Let's see. What if I want ice cream? Yeah. What if I want ice cream? Then you can buy yourself some of the general store. If you touch my stash, I will know, and there will be consequences. Hmm. But I'm your guest! Aren't you supposed to take care of me? I am. Hence the PB&J fixings. That'll get you through the week. You don't need me to buy you ice cream, so I don't have to. <laughs> Awesome! I love PB&J! How do you know it was one of my favorites? <laughs> what the fuck is that? That damned smile. That's a smile?! <laughs> I thought it was a grimace! <laughs> it looks... It looks like your famous smile doesn't run in the family. I didn't, but good for you. All right, what's next? What's ne All right, what's next on the tour? Bathroom, follow me. Great, it's been hours since I've gone. As the two of you leave the kitchen, you pass by a tuxedo cat sitting on the countertop. A what? I assume you mean the black and white cat over there. Tuxedo cat. Ha. <laughs> what a doofus of a name. As if t I mean that would be a dumb name, even if tuxedos were, by definition, black and white. But they aren't. That's far from even the- That's definitely a, a name invented by an idiot who had no idea about anything at all, really. Whatever. Let's see. Approach the cat. Don't try to pet Fru-Fru. If she wants to be pet, she'll let you know. <laughs> that she will. Don't talk to me. Ah, you speak French. Your French... Your French is terrible. Disgusting. How dare you defile my language with your clumsy American tongue. The file. What a sick joke. As if anyone could defile anything French more than f the French already do. Haha, ha, very funny. Her name sounds French. Stop wasting my time and let's finish the tour. You once again follow Tabitha through a long, dusty hallway. Maybe after a few nights, it'll get easier to navigate these spaces, but for the time being, you feel lucky to have not fallen through the floors. Guest bathroom, not much to show. It's a bathroom. I'll wait outside. Do what you must, if you must. Oh, oh, builder, preserve me. It is a wretched bathroom. Piles of junk sit untouched in the corners of the room, and mystery stains paint the floor. Ugh. Add it to the towering pile of reasons to not spend the week living here. Oh yeah, what a wonderful bathroom. That'll go down well. Sure, let's see what happens. I absolutely love it. I've always wanted one of those bathtubs with the little feet on it. Glad you like it. That bathtub is an extremely valuable antique. Did she seriously buy that? 
Okay. Maybe. I don't know. Who exactly uses this bathroom? Yeah, who exactly uses this bathroom? Guests. Mm. I don't like the way that they do that, where you do an option and then it's then you get something slightly different. Not only is it brazenly dishonest, it also forces me to read them over again just in case they've changed. Yeah. Wait, are you sure this toilet works? Uh, yes. Why wouldn't it? The water bills get paid, therefore the toilet works. It's not exactly how it works, but alright. Now do your business so we can move on. <sighs> Remain silent. You silently stare at the monumental task in front of you. Alright. Lovely. Scram, fellas! The jig is up! Bugs skitter from the ball as you lift the seat. Alright. A toilet is a toilet. Sure, it could be cleaner. But your business needs doing, and this is as good a place as any. You do what you must, and rejoin your cousin out in the hall. Next up, guest bedroom. Last stop on the tour. Follow me. You and Tabitha briefly return to the foyer before climbing the stairs and reaching the guest room. The room smells old. Dust, mildew, wood rot, it has it all. A week of sleeping in this place might give you permanent lung damage. Then don't. This is where you'll be staying. The linens are fresh. I had Janie wash them last week. I had to endure a half hour rant about her kid to get her to do it, so you better be grateful. An unmistakable stain coats this room. Someone has died here. No, people have died in here. The closet is full of old family stuff, so you can't hang your clothes up, but you can use the dresser. It should be empty. People have died here. People have died here, haven't they? I sense a heavy spiritual fog hanging over this room. People have died here, haven't they? When? This house is almost 150 years old. Obviously people have died here. What's with all the boxes? What? What's with all the boxes? What's with all the boxes? That's what I said. Old family stuff. Offer to help move them. Do you need help moving them? There's actually quite a bit of stuff lying around the estate. I could help you move things around and fix the place up. Look, I appreciate the offer, but Janie already comes in once a week. It's fine. This is inc- This is incredible! This is incredible! How'd you know how much I love cherubs? That chest is to die for! Once more, you surprise me with your discerning taste. Every last piece of furniture in this room is a genuine antique. Handed down through the family for generations. Who used to sleep here? Well, a lot of people, I imagine. Like I said, this house is almost 150 years old. Many, many people have slept here. A hun almost 150 years old. Huh. Okay, so that puts it at around 2010, then? Well... Okay, so, almost, because there's a bit of vagueness here. It says almost 150 years ago, so that could be anywhere, f so that could potentially be 145, maybe? That would be the least I'd expect for almost 150. They said it was built 
th almost three decades before the Biltmore Estate, which was built sometime between 1889 and 1895. So the latest this could possibly be is um, almost three decades, let's say 25 years. That's a bit of a stretch, but... And 18... So that would put it at 1870. 2020 at the very latest, but probably before 2010. <laughs> Alright, good to know. And now you'll sleep here, carrying on the fine tradition of bedrooms being slept in. Sounds good. <laughs> Let's just go full awkward and just remain silent. You can't think of anything else you'd like to say. But if the, but if there's one thing for certain, it's that you're not the sort of person who likes to, or even knows how to, verbally end conversations. You remain silent and wait for Tabitha to say something. I take it you don't have any other questions? Good. Follow me. I'll take you back to the foyer so you can collect your belongings. Hey. I resent that. No, doesn't know how to end conversations. Silence is a perfectly good ending to a conversation. I mean, it's the end to most conversations, really. If we didn't let silence fall, then we'd be stuck in an endless loop of platitudes and nonsense. That This concludes our tour. I'm afraid I must return to my duties, so you'll have to entertain yourself for the rest of the day. Don't expect to see much of me. Tip. Some dialogue options will open additional conversation paths. Some right away and others down the line. Yes, I'm aware of how basic structure works. Hey, so is it cool if I bring someone over at some point this week? What are you talking about? You don't even know anybody who lives here. Oh, but I will, in the biblical sense. I'm here for a week, there's plenty of time for a meet cute. Ugh. No. I despise that term. I'm talking about smooching, Tabitha. What's your smooching policy? I, I thought you were here for a funeral. Ugh, I can't believe I have to say this, but please don't bring someone home to, you know... Look, I have enough on my plate already. Let's just forget you said anything. What's the matter, Tabitha? Jealous? Well, if you insist, I could always look somewhere a bit closer to home for my smooching needs. There was... There was bad blood between our moms. But there doesn't have to be between us. I don't know what happened when my mom left, but that has nothing to do with me. You asked, you asked me to come here, but you're acting all pissed off that I actually came. Can't we just start fresh, now that it's just us? <laughs> just us and justice. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry I've been test- Okay. I'm sorry I've been testy since you've gotten here. You've been fine. I'm just under a lot of pressure right now. Please just stay out of my hair until later, okay? I have work to do. All right. Is there a is, is there a library in the estate? Is there I couldn't bring too many books with me, and I'm not sure what else I should do with my time. There is, but as I said earlier, most of this building is off limits. And the library is in the West Wing, which is extra off limits. You're better off heading into town. I'm pretty sure there's a library there. Is that right? Extra off limits. There's a ghost there, isn't there? What kind of work do you do? I run the coal mine. Same as every Scarlet who came before me. Except for you and your mom. It requires a lot of time and concentration, so I'd appreciate it if you didn't keep me for long. 
Can I come watch? What? No. The mine is dangerous. I can't babysit you and do my job. Hey, I resent that. Do I look like someone who needs babysitting? No. You gross! What? <laughs> what do you mean, you gross? Good for you just sounds patronizing, to be honest. And... I don't, I don't know why I wouldn't know that. Let's just remain silent. Whatever your thoughts may be on Tabitha's work situation, you decide it's best to keep them to yourself. Is there anything else you'd like to bother me with before I leave, or are we good? <laughs> uh. Are you sure you can't take the day off? It's a special occasion. Your cousin's in town. No. Some of us have responsibilities. If you think about it, isn't family the greatest responsibility of them all? Ha! That's rich coming from someone whose mother abandoned us because she didn't want to run the family business. Hey, fuck you! Uh, <laughs> I fail to see how that's at all relevant to what I am saying. If my mother was saying anything, that maybe would have some relevance, but my mother isn't here. And now, here I am, the only person left to manage the estate, and here you are, asking to take me away from my duties to hang out with you. I'm going back to work. Stay here, go into town, do whatever you want, just keep out of trouble. And you're not even gonna say shit about that, are you? Come on. Uh, developers, I found a bug. I can't find the bitch please option. <sighs> Whatever, fine then. If you're not gonna say anything about that, let's just not go down that path in the first place. I won't keep you, but we should hang out when you when you get back. We'll see. There's a lot that needs to get done this week. Your cousin leaves through the front door. And now it's just you. You and this sprawling, decrepit estate. Time to explore everywhere she told me not to. Starting with the library. <laughs> Naturally. Okay, actually, now seems like a good place to stop. At this little fork in the road, so to speak. <sighs> Alright. Why is the main menu so far away from the quit button? What? The way this is laid out is so fucking weird. Like, surely dialogue history and character history should be close together, and why is accessibility so... Weird. Anyway. Alright. There we have it. The first episode of my playthrough of Scarlet Hollow. We've gotten off to a weird start, haven't we? The best kind of start, of course. Besides, if you wanted a regular playthrough, I'm sure you have your pick. You have had your pick. You have seen the others be carried along by the whims of fate. Why not take a chance and take the reins for yourself instead? Either way, I shall leave you now. Until next time. I have been Joe Bob, and I'm very peeved. And remember, Dislike the video, unsubscribe if you're for some reason subscribed, and leave an nasty comment in the comment section down below. Fuck you all so much for watching, and so long, suckers.